Morning and afternoon people. So today what we're doing is uh, the first honey extraction of 2023. So two things first. First of all, we'd like to open a YouTube shop so we can sell this honey, but for that we need 1,000 subscribers. We're at about 550 now. So if you're not subscribed, just think about hitting that subscribe button for us, get us to that 1,000 subscribers so we can open a shop and then you can buy some of this honey. Secondly, if you found the channel, just in a label on the bottom of your jar of honey saying if you want to see how this honey is produced head over to this channel on YouTube or to the beekeeping library you'll see a batch number 2301 the batch number of the honey we extract today will be in the title of the video so you've got a jar of honey with that batch number on it this is your honey being extracted and jarred today so let's start Right, so this is the super honey that we're extracting today. Now, for honey to be ready to extract, it needs to be between 16 and 18% moisture. If it's below 17%, no fermentation can take place. Now bees are clever. They're storing this honey away to save it for winter. The honey will last forever if it's below 17% moisture. So to that end, what the bees will do is they will not cap the honey until it's ready until it's below 17% moisture as you can see these frames are 100% capped that's how we know it's ready now beekeepers say as long as the super is 80% capped you can take that honey the moisture will be below 17% but I don't like to Do that. I just like to wait until the frames are all 100% capped. So now what I'll do is I'll take you through uh, what we do before we start um, extracting the honey. Now before we start the extraction, uh, there's a couple of things we've got to do. So first of all, we sterilise everything. Use that milk and sterilising solution. This is what you use for sterilising babies' bottles and babies' eating utensils. So it's a food safe sterilising solution. It's no rinse, however, I do rinse everything after I sterilised it. I don't want to leave any kind of residue of steriliser taste to the honey. We wear a fetching blue hairnet, sterile nitrate gloves, and we make sure we're clean shaven. Not to get any hairs into the honey. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sterilise everything. I'll bring you back in a sec and I'll show you the equipment we're going to be using to extract this honey. Right, the first thing we've got is a decapping station here. Decapping knife. Decapping fork. We'll go back in a second. Gloves hair net. Spare set of gloves because it's sticky work. Got to keep changing your gloves every now and then. We've got a honey spinner. Three frame spinner. And here we've got the bucket the honey's collected in. And a two stage filter. One on top and the final on the bottom. The bottom filter goes down to four micro, uh, 400 microns, I believe. So, let's start decapping. Right, so, start decapping our frame. So what we'll do is our decapping stage, there's a nail there. The frame rests up against that nail, that stops it slipping. We take our decapping knife, this top box into the bottom box. And that's the honey that I'm going to keep. Then what we do is you'll see there's some areas you didn't get because it's, it's slightly lower. So we'll just take our decapping fork. We just decap those. You see those cappings come off quite nicely. We turn it around, do the other side. Right, so that's both sides decapped now. And that frame goes into our honey spinner. It's a three frame spinner, so I'll decap two more frames and then we'll start spinning the honey out. Okay, so we've got three frames in our spinner now. Going, slow speed it up. 
once we've got that to full speed and leave that going for about 10 minutes we stop it, we turn the frames around we extract the other side I've been there for about 10 minutes we've extracted one side of these frames so as you can see all the honey's out of that side I've got to turn it around now and extract the other sides so turn all these frames around and then get the spinner back on now another 10 minutes See how time consuming this is, we're doing one super say, 11 frames, imagine if you were doing 10 supers. So that's those three frames extracted. Now these are what we call wet frames, they've still got honey on them. So what we do is we put this back in this super, when we're done that'll go back on the beehive and the bees will um, clean that up, they'll gorge on that honey, they'll clean it, they'll use it. They'll repair any damage to that uh, comb and I'll start filling it again with the summer honey flow that's coming soon. As you can see, I've got this on the floor so I don't get the kitchen floor all sticky and get killed by the wife. So now repeat that process until all the frames are extracted. As you can see now, that is full of honey at the bottom. We've still got two frames to extract. But we're going to have to let some of that honey out filter it now. There we go. So what's going to happen now that honey has got wax cappings in it, as you can see. It's going to go through that double screen filter. That's going to filter all that out and we're going to be left in the bottom bucket just pure honey and that's what we will be um, putting the jars and labelling up which I'll take you through when we're done. Two more frames to extract, that's all the honey extracted and we'll move on to the clean up and then putting it in jars. So that's the extraction complete. Um, so it's going to take quite a while for all that honey to run out of there and go through the filter. So honey is very thick. So in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll put my bee suit on, that I'll go back on the hive, the bees will gorge on the honey that's remaining in there. So the bees are having a good day today. Um, I'll start the clean up. Now, decapper, all those cappings in there, they've got honey amongst them. That honey will run through the top box into the bottom box. That's the honey I'll keep for myself. Then there's wax cappings that get put out in front of the beehive. The bees will clean all the honey off them and then we'll collect them and those will be used to make wax blocks and wax candles. So nothing goes to waste. So the super is back on the uh, beehive. The cappings are in front of the hive. Bees getting honey off those and that's the last of the honey just coming through to get filtered. So that top honey super there, it's all just extracted, that's back on the hive. There's the wax cappings. You can see the bees going crazy for it. So I think we're gonna get somewhere like 25 jars out of that. So um, what we're gonna do, we've got a sink there, made up with a milk and sterilizer solution. <coughs> what we're gonna do, Put these in the sterilizer. Each jar, we wash the sterilizer solution and then thoroughly rinsed with warm water. Right, now we're going to start the process of drying the honey. So you can see most of it's through the filter. There's the wax just remaining at the top. That wax will go to the bees. So the drying process, it's got a set of scales. We're going to tear the scales. So 
start filling our jars. As you can see, this is a very tedious process because the honey is so thick, it takes a while to get into the jar. It's one pound jars of honey, so 454 grams. So we'll get those on the scales. A little bit more. Okay, so we're over. Let's have a look on that. So 472 grams, so a bit over, but that's fine. I'd rather go with the customer a little bit more rather than a little bit less. <coughs> so we fill all the jars up to that level. We know they're over a pound, we're good to go. Sixty-six. Each jar is coming in over 454 grams, so if you're prized on this honey you're getting a good deal. So there we are, we've actually got 18 jars in the end. Um, another half a jar there, that's for me. I've got about half a jar of the cappings, so I've got a full probably 500 gram jar for myself. So what we do now with these, inevitably, you will end up with the jars being a bit sticky because um, your hands are always sticky. So what we do is we just give them a wash, dry them off with a tea towel, and then we'll go on to labelling. Right, so for some reason my microphone messed up here, so I'll do a bit of voiceover. So basically what I'm saying is we then go ahead and label these jars carefully, um, so they look good on the shelf at the shop. And then also I stick a label on the bottom, which basically tells people, it's got the batch number, and it tells people that they can come to this YouTube channel if they want to see how their honey was produced. Um, and this, this honey is going to a farm shop. In Lessingham, in Lincolnshire, or some of it at least. Uh, anyway, so if you enjoyed that video, give it a big thumbs up. Um, thanks.